Hi, I'm Mary Stoker from Campfire Ministries, and today is day 37 of the 40 Day Marriage Love Challenge. I'm going to be in Santa for Jeff for a few days because he had to go to work. So, today's topic is Love Agrees in Prayer. Let's get started by praying. Dear Father, thank you for today. Thank you for, first of all, waking us up today, dear Lord. Thank you for my husband, dear Lord. Just keep him safe, going to work, and bring him home back, home safe, dear Lord. Thank you for all our kids, dear Lord. Thank you for everybody watching this video and people we can touch, dear Lord. Just be with our country and everybody we know. Be with me as I teach this lesson. Hide me behind the cross and give me the words to say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Like I said, today is day 37 of the 40-day love, love challenge. And today's topic is love ag agrees in prayer. And today's verse is coming from Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Out of the book, it says, If two agree on earth about everything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by their father. Coming out the King James, it says, Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touched any thing that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. That is Matthew verse, Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. If you tell some, if someone told you that by changing one thing about your relationship, your marriage would guarantee you near 100% accuracy that living your life Garrett, would specifically pray with you at least want to know what it was probably so you'd probably want to know and for many godly couples the one thing is the daily practice of praying together I know my favorite thing to do with Jeff is when we pray together. That makes me really happy. We pray together when we read our Bible, when we go to bed, when we have time. We love praying together. So, married couples, if you're married, pray with your spouse. If you're engaged and you're a um, godly couple, pray together before um, you go to, you know, during the day. To someone who attends to evaluate spiritual matters, this sounds very ridiculous. And if you told that shared prayer is a key ingredient in marital longevity and leads to a high sense of sexual intimacy, they would think you had really gone too far. But the unity that grows between a man and a woman to really pray together for a sense and powerful connection. Yes, if you pray with your spouse, you're going to be like this. You're always going to be like that together. You're always going to um be as one, like the Bible says. With the sanctuary of your marriage, praying together can work wonders on every level of your relationship. <coughs> I'm sorry about that. When you were joined together as husband and wife, God gave you a wedding gift, a permanent prayer partner for life. That's right. He gave you a permanent prayer partner for life. So take that chance. If you're having a bad day and you need to talk to your spouse, just get your Bible and ask him or her to pray with you. It'll help. It'll make you feel better. When you need wisdom on a certain decision, you and your prayer partner can see God together for answer. I know one thing, Jeff and I pray together about stuff all the time. We were considering something and we prayed about it and we got an answer for it. When you're struggling with your own fears and securities, your prayer partner can hold your hand and secure it on your behalf. That's right. Always hold hands with your prayer partner. 
When you and your spouse are not getting along and can't get past a regular armament or sticking point, you can call a timeout, drop your weapons, and go with your prayer partner into emergency prayer. That's right. If you're having an argument with your spouse, go into emergency prayer. Just pray about it. Like, um, if he's trying to get a new job and you're worried about it, just go and pray about it because God will help you with it. God is the only person that can help us. He died on the cross for us, so we should go to him in prayer whenever we um, need, need prayer and he will answer it. It should become your automatic reflect action when you don't know what else to do. It's hard to stay angry along with someone for whom you're praying. It's hard not to back down when you're hearing your mate humbly cry out to God and beg him for mercy in the midst of your hated crisis. In prayer, two people remember that God had made them one. In the grip of his unity, presence, disharmony, pleasant, and beauty. Pray for your spouse. Lead your heart to care more deeply about them. That's right. Pray for your spouse daily. I know every night when I go to bed, I thank God for my sweet, amazing husband, and he does the same thing for me. We pray for each other, and we also pray for all of our kids. Yes, all, almost all six of them. We pray for them all to, that God will always keep them safe. In prayer, two people remember that God made them. Okay. Praying for your spouse leads your heart to care more about them deeply. But more importantly, God is pleased when you see, He sees you both humbling yourself and seeing His face. That's right, together. God is, it's more importantly, God is pleased when he sees both you and your husband or wife humbling yourself and seeing his face together. His blessing falls on you when you agree in prayer. That's right. Remember, if you're a married couple or just a couple, always agree in prayer. The word Jesus used when he talks about greeting and prayer has the idea of harmic sympathy. Two separate notes, one at a time, sound different. They're supposed to each other, but play them at the same time in agreement, and they can create a pleasant sense of harmony. Together, they give fuller, more complete sound then either of them can make on its own. Agreeing in prayer is like that, even in the midst of a disagreement. That's right, even in the midst of a disagreement. It puts you both back towards your real center. It places you on common ground face to face. Before the Father, it restores harmony in the midst of a connection. The church which is the scripture has marriage with Christ, marriage connection with Christ. Can someone be a place where conflict rules? The disharmony that can flare up over various matters can derail the church from its mission and disrupt the free flow of worship and unity. At times, God's church leaders will see what's taking place. Break of discussion and call the people of God to pray. Instead of continuing this discord and allowing more feelings to hurt, they will seek unity by turning their hearts back to God and appealing to Him for help. The same thing happens in our homes when there is an intervention of prayer even a high point of disagreement. Remember, if you have a disagreement with your partner, pray about it. If you have to, just pray. Cause, because praying, God will answer it. 
Get your partner and take him or him or her. Get your Bible and read what it says. And just pray and say, Honey, sweetheart, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Or if it's him, he'll apologize too. It always works. It stops the bleeding. It's just quiet. It's quiet. The loud voice. It pauses you as you realize what presence you're in. Prayer is for a lot more than breaking up fights. Prayer is a privilege to be enjoying on a constant, daily basis. When you know that a prayer time waits you before going to bed. It will change the way you spend your evening. If you spend your evening watching TV or movies or hanging out with your spouse, trust me, prayer will change it. Even if your prayers go are typically short to the point, this will become a standing appointment that you can om omit your day to keep around, keeping God in the middle of everything. Always keep God in the middle of your marriage because Jesus is the most important thing. He's the one that put y'all together, so that's why he gave you a prayer partner for life. He gave you a prayer partner. You might be two different people, but you are one in his flesh. It's true that beginning a habit like this can usually feel awkward and uncomfortable. Anything that's power powerful will surprise you with its weight and responsibility when you actually try doing it. Be bear in mind that God wants you to engage with Him. Invite you. In fact, He will go with you as you take it seriously and push past those when you don't know what to say. <coughs> You'll look back at this common thread that ran through everything from average Monday to major decisions and to be so thankful for this one thing that changed everything. This is one area where it's imper this is one area it's perfect that you agree to agree. Well, right now it's time for the dare. But before we do our dare for today, Before we do our dare for today, this is what the dare says. Ask your spouse if you can begin praying together. If you haven't been praying with your spouse, ask him or her. Take a chance on that. Talk about the best time to do this, whether it's in the morning, lunchtime hour, or before bedtime. Use this time to commit to your concern, disagreements, and needs before the Lord. Don't forget to thank Him for His previous and blessings. Any of your spouse refuse to do this, resolve, spend the, this resolve to spend the daily time in prayer yourself. So, either pray, pray, <coughs> either pray with your spouse, but if they do not agree, pray by yourself. But if I was you, and I had a good prayer partner, like, for example, my godly husband, I know I could have a prayer partner. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your prayer partner, because trust me, putting Jesus first in your relationship will strengthen your marriage and help. And it also is a good example for your kids, no matter how old they are, to see you praying with your spouse. And also, get the kids involved, too. It don't just have to be you and your prayer partner. Do it as a family. And then, before you go to bed, or in the morning, or at lunchtime, like the dare says, pray with your partner and your children. Do this, and see how things change. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to close now with prayer. Dear Father, thank you for today. Thank you for giving me the words to say in this video, dear, Go dear Lord. Thank you for prayer and thank you for all our prayer partners, dear Lord. Thank you for mine, dear Lord, that 
I can have somebody to pray with when I need it, dear Lord. Thank you for him and all our kids and all these people who are listening and all our Facebook friends and all the people we know, dear Lord. Just keep everybody safe. Thank you for being you and thank you for dying on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen and God bless. Have a good night.